Clint Gresham is my guest, a former member of the Seattle Seahawks, went to the Super Bowls. We're talking about twice, one at once. You were the long snapper. Now I was going to get to Pastor Robbie Simons over here. Uh, we're going to demonstrate, but maybe we won't do that. <laughs> well, essentially, what does a long snapper do? As an upside-down quarterback. <laughs> okay. I bend over and I throw a football between my legs to the punter or the holder on field goals. And so anytime it's fourth down, that's when the long snapper is out there. So it's a specialized position. How did you get specialized? Because I'm sure you played other positions in high school and college. Yeah, I, uh, I wasn't a good enough quarterback. <laughs> so, so you had to go upside down. Uh, yeah, so I had to figure out another way to get into college and play. And so, no, I, was, I wanted to play college football, and I was looking for a way to beef up my resume. And so... My dad suggested that I learn how to long snap, and so we sort of just, we ordered a VHS tape and popped it into our VCR and sort of taught myself how to do it in the backyard. Wow, good for you. So you play six years in the NFL, that's great. You had signed a three-year contract, you're one year into your contract, you're, I think, practicing golf, yeah. and you get a phone call on your phone, and it's from the general manager of the Seahawks. Did you immediately know at that point, this is not good? I knew this was not a good sign. It's never a good sign when you have two years left on your contract and the general manager is calling you in March. And so uh, I let it go to voicemail. I iced him because if you're going to fire me, it's going to be on my terms. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and uh, But I call him back up and he just lets me know that, hey, thanks for the time. We appreciate it. We want to go in another direction. And I think for athletes especially, it isn't so much so that I lost my job. It's I lost who I was. I lost a father in a way because football becomes a father to a lot of these guys because most of them come from a home where there isn't a dad around. And so football becomes that because it gives you identity and it gives you love, but it makes you perform for it. So how did that then, you, you lose your job as a professional football player, you still I mentioned two years on the contract, but did that you know do some soul searching and is that what is the result of your book yeah. now and becoming who, you know, you were the football player, but now you're Clint and you've got another something yeah. else to do in life. Yeah. I, it, I could have preached a message to thousands of people that my identity is not in what I do, but inevitably we are going to put our identity in the thing that gives us the greatest sense of significance. And for football players, it's easy. You know, I can wear this Super Bowl ring around and feel important, feel like I matter. And so the opening chapter of my book goes into that whole identity thing because that is the number one thing. Like, why am I important? If it's just to push paper around and earn a living and make a lot of money, that's a very small life. Hmm. And as followers of Jesus, we need to realize that our identity comes from who God says we are, not who people say we are. So when tough times come in life, which they inevitably will, it doesn't blow me apart because my identity is on, on something that can't be taken away. Now, as a sportscaster, I've been around athletes, uh, you know, my, all my adult life, and some have transitioned okay. The Christian guys that I know, they have transitioned better because they felt that their athletics was their platform to be able to do something which was more important, and that is proclaim the message of Jesus. Yeah, yeah, and it was helpful for me. Um, like I mentioned earlier, I think that it is inevitable, though, that we will put our identity in what we do. And when you have somebody who came from nothing and football is their dad, it isn't that I got fired from my job. It's dad doesn't want me anymore, mm. which is one of the most devastating blows a man can experience in their life. And so that entire year after that happened was basically what birthed this book. And so I wrote it in a really painful season of life. And more than anything, it helped me process the death of my own identity as a football player. And what I found is that as people have read it, they're hearing their voice in it as well. Well, you know, I read recently statistics about the high divorce rate, even beyond the norms of culture among the athletes because they struggle with addiction and trying to find identity. But you found an identity. Now tell me about uh, what, some of the things you're doing. you got these really yeah. cool cards. Yeah. Um, I, this is a resource that I created. It's called iTalk. These are biblically-based affirmations to train our self-talk. And so we have between 60,000 and 80,000 thoughts a day. Wow. 80% of those thoughts are negative because our brain is trying to keep us alive and identify threats. What that ends up meaning wow. is that we end up looking at our situation not through the lens of a, re of a renewed mind, but one that is negative. And so, which means that more negative things come into our life. And so these are 52 cards. So on one side is an affirmation and the other side is a scripture that supports that truth. And what we don't realize is that God has so much to say about our emotional being and how to carry our soul. 
And so I go through those things every single morning just to remind myself of who God says that I am because when I know who God says that I am, I can go into any situation with confidence. 80%. Wow, no wonder we're told in the scripture to meditate, to read, to just to take it in. Well, Clint, it was really nice meeting you yes, and uh, you'll thank probably be watching the me. Super Bowl like me and uh, we look forward to seeing you out there again and continue yes. the best as you, as you continue to proclaim the message of Jesus. Thanks so much. Bro. All right, blessings. Yeah, bless you.